Hello, Steve White, Trekboy89 for Steve Arts 89 Well, we um, have a little bit of Star Trek news. Um, the Emmy nominations are in, and, and they've, all, they've, they've gotten all the um, most prestigious awards um, nominated for. Star Trek Picard got Outstanding Prosthetic Makeup, Outstanding Prosthetic and or Character Makeup, Non... What? Period? Outstanding period and or car how can it be period? I mean, it's in the future. It's a different era. It's a time period, but it's wow. Okay, they did they just make up an award for it. Um, outstanding period and or character hairstyling. Outstanding sound editing. Um, outstanding sound mixing. So obviously Hollywood is just um, just just blown away by the writing and acting of um, in Picard <laughs> because it's nominated for hair and makeup which is pretty standard for Star Trek actually sadly um, it hasn't been respected for its writing and acting even when it had writing and acting um, probably with the exception of Patrick Stewart's nomination um, no was it Patrick or was it the series that was nominated for best drama series Next Generation got one primetime Emmy nomination back in the day um, and the other one, which really made me sad, um, was the short tracks. Short tracks. Well, they are sort of short tracks, aren't they? Short tracks. Um, Q and A. Outstanding short form comedy or drama series. Comedy or drama series. Short form comedy or drama series. Star Trek was nominated in the outstanding short form comedy or drama series category. Is this not alarming to anyone? <laughs> oh, God. Um, now, I like the new Spock. Like, he's kind of hot, like, and he seems like a nice guy, and um, his acting is fine. Um, he didn't have a lot to work with script-wise. I mean, he didn't have any choice in what Spock did. Um, I don't have an issue with him, and Re Rebecca Ramon, we, Ramon, we love her, um, and she did a good number one, again, working with what she had, script-wise. Um, but that short, um, there's just so many things wrong with it, but they're all things that only Star Trek fans would spot, so I can understand why um, the Emmys would not <laughs> see that. So that's just a bit strange. I, I just, I, I'm still like, period hairdressing, like literally, did they make that up? For this, or how how did they work Star Trek into a period piece? I mean, maybe the older shows where they actually were paying attention to the canon and the style um, and the production of the earlier shows that they were um, adhering to, then you could consider it period because they were staying true to the twenty fourth or twenty third century period look. But Picard didn't even do that, so I don't even understand how they managed that. Um, okay, so, and the short tracks, I mean, again, outstanding short form comedy or drama series. Now, I know drama series is in there as well, short form, it is short, but we know it's there because people are basically laughing at it, or supposed to be laughing at it. Um, okay, let's just focus on the other thing. Now, I, I had seen something about this and didn't care. Um, basically, Discovery got its, um, finally got its um, premiere date of October 15, and this is not a surprise. I mean, it was kind of obvious it was going to be um, coming up after Lower Decks. They had said they wanted to have one show after another in production um, with Star Trek and just go from one to the next. They need to keep people watching CBS All Access. Um, and it was just funny to see Ket Walski, because um, unfortunately I've been watching his videos lately, um, going on about how he predicted it, like somehow he had some sort of insight or knowledge, um, and therefore this um, allowed him to claim that his claims that season four are going to happen must be true because he knew this. He didn't know this, he guessed this. And so far as season four, unfortunately it does look by um, the information he's managed to find that, that at least the um, plans for season four were, were, were um, 
happening at some point. Where it actually is happening or does happen is another issue, but they certainly were prepping for it. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm still hoping it doesn't. Um, but the thing that annoyed me was um, he was saying how, um, well, this flies in the face, Se season three premiering flies in the face of people who said season three wouldn't happen. That's true. There were people who were saying season two wouldn't happen and then season three wouldn't happen, disappointing me greatly when they did. Um, and now those same people saying season four won't happen. The difference is, um, he was pointing out the fact that, oh, they, they were a bit late finishing up, and this was the reason people believed season four wasn't happening and season four was cancelled, because they were um, retooling the end of the show, and that's why they were still working. Nobody said that. People said they had reshot the ending, and they did do reshoots, and these were in a certain time period. This was um, tweeted by people in the production, and that that was retooling the end of the series to be the end of the series, not just the end of the season. Um, but the fact it was taking longer to get finished was because of COVID. We all knew that. No one was saying that was, and no one was stupid enough to think that that slow production had anything to do with the idea of the show being cancelled. Um, yeah, so, and he was using that as an excuse. Oh, they all said this. And no, nobody said that. Why people think it's been cancelled is because there are reports that the sets have all been torn down at Pinewood Studios. Now, I don't have any confirmation of this. I've tried to get someone from... I had someone come on my um, my comments and say that they knew people at Pinewood and they knew the sets had been torn down and the series definitely wasn't happening. Like I was saying, it was like they thought they were talking to Ket Wosky or something. I'm like, no, I think it's going to be cancelled. I, I don't want it to continue. Um... If destroying the Federation and destroying Star Trek's optimistic future is what they see Star Trek is, and basically turning the show into Andromeda, um, where it's all cheap and um, nasty and dark and nihilistic and not Star Trek at all in any recognisable form, then I don't want it. And that looks like what Season 3 is going to be. Now, whether this is just the um, problem they're setting up that they're going to overcome and then the rest the parts of the season will actually have some form recognisable Star Trek in it, I don't know or if the whole season is just a bunch of cheap um, Canadian backlot shoots where they're basically on the bridge or, you know, on that one set, that's sort of it. Um, I don't know, I don't know what's going to be, but I just found it really annoying that... And people do this when they're trying to win arguments. They'll say that someone claimed something was an explanation for something which is disproven when they never said that. So no one was saying that because the show was delayed... Um, the production seemed to be seemed to be slow, not delayed, but slow in getting finished, and that they were slow to announce the um, the new season and all that was because it had been cancelled. No one said that. Um, we all knew it was due to COVID, and that's just common sense. So that was a little bit annoying, and he does annoy me because he's such a shill. Um, but he does do his research, and he does have a lot of good information, so that's why I watch his videos. So that's the only compliment I can give him. But him saying... How are we going to have 23 weeks of Star, Star Trek? And this is great. I'm like, no, we're not having 23 weeks of Star Trek. We're having, I mean, we've got a parody, a comedy parody, cartoon parody, um, like a lowbrow one, and then we've got Discovery. Neither one of those two are Star Trek. Orville is more Star Trek than Lower Decks. And Discovery, God, Andromeda is more Star Trek than Discovery. I can give a, a couple of shows that are more Star Trek, or, Orville as well. But, um, yeah, so that was... And he was just being so perky and like, I don't know why all these people are hating. Why don't they just get on board and have fun like the rest of us? Because we like Star Trek, not general science fiction. If you just like general science fiction, you could possibly enjoy Star Trek if you ignored the bad writing, the plot inconsistencies. Just... If you didn't care also about production quality and writing and you just wanted... um quality visuals, even though they're dark and not Star Trek, and um, production elements like the set design in, in the first season when they had money for sets. Um, I can kind of almost see how you could enjoy Star Trek if you didn't like Star Trek, I mean, enjoy Discovery. If you didn't like Star Trek and you just like science fiction in general, um, I can kind of understand how you could enjoy it. But if you're a Star Trek fan, I don't know how you could enjoy it. What is there to enjoy? There's no optimistic future. There's no um, evolved humanity. There's no camaraderie. There's no family. 
there's no consistency in the cat. Like you never know who's going to live or die. This because they're trying to be Game of Thrones in space, and then they're trying to be Star Wars in space. And I don't understand how you can enjoy it as a Star Trek fan. I watched every episode, and it was tedious. I did it just because I started, and I'm I just wanted to finish. I, I wanted to see what happened just because I want to see what they do so far as make a mess out of it, not, oh, I'm so excited, I want to see what they're going to do next. Never did I have that moment. The only sh slightly shining element was um, Pike, the Enterprise, the possibility of a separate series. That would be done differently. And just another Discovery series with um, Pike and that on the Enterprise, if it's just going to be like Discovery, means nothing. The only hope that I had for it was that being a different show, they could be different and actually be like Star Trek and they'd be able to get away with it because the Discovery fans can have Discovery and the Star Trek fans can have Strange New Worlds. That's what I was hoping, but it's looking less and less like that. It looks like it's just going to be more about preaching political agendas and um, just all those things that made Discovery bad. Um, and I'm losing confidence in that. So that's another thing. I, just from the more I hear from the writers... Um, they, it's not that they don't know what Star Trek is, and I sort of thought if we can just get someone else in charge, um, so another um, showrunner who knows more about Star Trek, maybe a different series could be different. But the reality is they know what Star Trek is, they don't like it, they want to change it, they're doing it deliberately, they're doing it knowingly, and they're doing it collectively. So I'm losing hope that any of the Star Trek shows under this regime can actually be any good. So there we go. Um, October 15th for Discovery Season 3. We still have no um, foreign distribution for Lower Decks. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go. Um, there's nothing good here. I'm just reporting it. I'm just talking about it. Um, feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about Discovery and anything else. <sighs> Thanks. Bye.